I have never been able to understand how a father could tenderly love his charming daughter without having slept with her at least once, he wrote. So you thought we left father-daughter love back in ancient Egypt? Nope. We have a personal account from not just any man, but the famous Casanova. Being an 18th century nymphomaniac was his trademark, as well as an adventurer who got himself into so many situations, they forever immortalized him. Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. In this video we'll be looking at Casanova and how he might have looked in real life. If you're new to my channel, welcome. Here on Mortal Faces I take historic portraits and transform them to see how individuals we read about might have looked in real life. So thank you for watching, subscribe for more recreations, and let me know in the comments who you'd like to see. One thing Casanova was famous for was his passion for betting women. Young women, well, more like teenagers. Actually there were a few who were pre-teens, one was nine. Anyways, he got so careless that he even impregnated his own daughter. Even in the pleasure capital of 18th century Venice, Casanova's origins were less than blue-blooded, not born to Venetian high aristocracy or even the respectable merchant class. He was born in 1725 to two actors, Gaetano Casanova and Zanetta Farusi. Both parental figures would become archetypes for young Casanova the latter for abandoning him and forever coloring his association with women, and the former for casting doubt on his son's parentage. Regardless, Casanova was raised in this eclectic bohemian family, primarily by his grandmother Marzia, after his father died and his mother began touring Europe. Giacomo Casanova was a gawky child, considered slow and prone to nosebleeds, but his teenage summers ripened him up and he possessed a great wit and enough education that made him a delightful companion, which during his travels allowed him to meet the acquaintance of Voltaire, Catherine the Great, Benjamin Franklin, and even Mozart. He also managed to escape one of the most heavily guarded prisons in Venice, being the first man to do so. But we're not here for his adventures, rather his dark truth. For all the romanticism surrounding this 18th century Venetian, much of it was promoted by Casanova himself in his famous memoir, L'Histoire de ma vie. In his memoirs, there were plenty of instances where he outright abused his masculinity and charisma. In several instances, children were even the objects of his affections. His initial sexual awakening happened as a young teenager in Padua when he lost his virginity in a menage a trois with two young noble women who happened to be sisters. According to Casanova, he betted over 120 women in his lifetime. As well as good looks, he possessed the rare gift of befriending women. He had the knack of addressing them as if they were his equals and undressing them as if they were his superiors. You see, he saw himself as too good for alcohol and violence. No, no, no. He had a system. Betting wasn't just a passion for Casanova, it was a full-on Shakespearean play. Just sleeping with someone wasn't enough for him, he needed the drama. Like an 18th century version of the dentist system, he perfected a formula for his ideal affair, and this is how it went. Act 1, find a beautiful woman with a jealous lover. Act 2, play the hero, save her from the brute and seduce her. Act 3, get bored with her and then set her up with another man, maybe even the one she'd been with in the first place. And then Act 4, skip town and start again. Yeah, he was very detailed in his memoirs and with little regret, and it gets a whole lot worse than that. You see, in the 1740s, according to this book, he purchased a girl's virginity from her own mother and beat the girl when she wouldn't submit. A couple decades later, in St. Petersburg, he bought a 13-year-old sex slave, and he described her as not yet finished budding. In 1774, at the ripe age of 50, Casanova ran into a former lover, Irene, with her 9-year-old daughter. By this account, the little girl did not reject my caresses, he even encouraged Irene to offer her daughter to a wealthy baron, who loved little girls as much as I did. It seems Casanova was so obsessed that he saw violating a nine-year-old as something worthy of honor and celebration, rather than a sign of perversion. So where does his daughter-lover come into play? Well, during Casanova's younger years, while an apprentice for the priesthood, he had an affair with a married noblewoman by the name of Donna Lucrezia. Casanova boasts of sneaking into bed with her. Out of this affair with Lucrezia came a daughter, Leonilda, who was raised as the legitimate offspring 
of her noble husband. It's not clear how Leonilda and Casanova met or if at the time they knew about their close familial relationship, but at 16, to the shock of everyone present, Leonilda presented Casanova, who was her biological father, to her family as her would-be fiancé. Are you losing your mind? Fortunately, the marriage did not go ahead, but before Casanova parted with the family, he bedded Lucrezia, and this time, Leonilda joined them. Casanova makes it clear that he didn't sleep with Leonilda on this occasion. However, if Casanova himself is to be believed, then they met again years later. His former lover, Lucrezia, revealed that their daughter, Leonilda, had married, yet her husband couldn't have children. And that's when she made a shocking request and begged Casanova to impregnate his own daughter. And he actually did it. A liaison which resulted in a child making Casanova the father of his own grandson. I'm gonna leave you with an excerpt from his memoirs. The three go to bed together. It was Leonilda who undressed her mother, while after wrapping my hair in a kerchief, I threw my clothes into the middle of the room. She tells her daughter to get into bed beside her. Your father, she says, will confine his attention to your mother, and I, she replies, will give mine to you both. And that brings us to the end of this video. If you want to see more, check out King Tut's incestuous family tree or the Habsburgs Leopold I and his child bride niece. Lots more on my channel. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more recreations and family trees. Each of your subscriptions has helped this channel grow. It allows me to continue making more content for you. Let me know in the comments who you'd like to see in upcoming videos. And I will see you in the next one.